Hey folks, and welcome back. Today we're going to be working on another Monsterpedia entry by painting and talking about this model. This is an Anna's Hag. Now this is the official model from Wizards of the Coast, and this is actually the first time that I've used one of their official models on the channel. That said, I do like their models. I think that they're a good balance point between being easy and fun to paint and not being bogged down with a million little details that are going to make using them difficult. As you may be able to tell, I have stripped the pre-primer off of this model and replaced it with a Zenithal Prime. I just use isopropyl alcohol and a scrub brush to do that. This model was generously supplied to the channel by today's sponsor, CMO Games, but we'll talk about that a little more later. For now, I just want to jump in and get to work on the model. Hags have been part of folklore and myth from so far back that the term is originally recorded in Middle English, a language spoken from the years 1150 to about 1500. So we're talking about a creature that goes way, way, way back. They appear in all manner of modern media too, of course, in all manner of different incarnations. You might think of the witch from Hansel and Gretel, or maybe Baba Yaga. You might even turn to Ursula from The Little Mermaid, or the titular witch from The Blair Witch Project. I'm sure a lot of you are probably thinking of a particular Baldur's Gate character as well. Today though, we're talking about D&D's Anis Hag specifically. It made its first appearance much more recently in a module called The Forgotten Temple of Therizdun in 1982 which makes the Anis Hag a 1st edition monster, though it has appeared in 2nd, 3rd, and 5th edition as well. Like so many other things, I guess it didn't make the cut for 4th. So what actually is the Anis Hag? The word Hag probably conjures up ideas of spellcasting and trickery, malevolence towards children. Those are all true for the Anis Hag to some degree, but on top of that, the evil fey is an absolute brute of a creature that can easily hold its own in close combat. We'll get into that a bit more later on, but for now, suffice it to say that it has a crushing hug attack that grapples an enemy and does 9d6 plus 5 damage every single turn until the creature escapes. Yeah, the Anis Hag is an absolute menace in close combat, to low-level parties. On top of that, the Anis Hag stands an imposing 8 feet tall with skin like a deep bruise, and in modern editions is portrayed as being corded with thick muscles. They're known to be able to rip a grown man into pieces with their bare hands. As if that weren't terrifying enough, their talons and teeth are made of rusted iron and their leather robes well, there's really no dolling it up. The leather comes from people. Yeah, Soylent Green style. She just... She just straight up skins her victims, often children, and turns them into clothing. If somehow that isn't creepy or intimidating enough to your party, don't worry. It gets a lot worse. Anna's hags have massive egos and are drawn to displays of power. That means that when it comes to collecting minions and hench creatures, they tend to favor equally physically imposing monsters like trolls and ogres. Yeah, that's right, they will bully and intimidate trolls into doing their bidding. That's how fearsome they are. It's not at all uncommon to find an Anis Hag surrounded by equally intimidating powerhouse monsters. And sure, all of that's bad, right? monster that can rip people apart, powerful minions, and a total creep. But that doesn't exactly stand out in D&D, does it? A lot of monsters can tear a grown man apart. So what makes the Anis Hag special? Well, the Hag is a creature of cunning and malice. She tends to make her home on the outskirts of uncivilized villages, in mountains or hilly areas. She'll leave tokens, sometimes constructed out of the bones and teeth of her previous victims, around the outskirts of the village to terrify the locals and as a way to 
sort of claim the territory as her own. Again, big Blair Witch vibes. More than that, though, what this evil fae loves doing best is corrupting children. It's not uncommon to hear of a neglected child having met a kindly old woman in the woods who maybe gave them a treat, paid attention to them, said nice things to them, maybe even gave them a little token of her affection, a small coin or a trinket, even a little mirror. Of course, the old woman in question is the Anis Hag using their disguised self spell to appear as a kind old lady, and the token. Well, remember those iron-like teeth and nails? She can actually yank them out of herself and shape them, polish them, and give them to children. And she can then use them to talk to the child one-on-one, -on -one, whispering coercive words in their ear and teaching them to do mischief. Small things at first, maybe uh, sneaking out, breaking things, being mean to their siblings. But as the corruption continues, soon the child graduates to violence, maybe even pushing someone down the stairs or setting the house on fire. That puts the entire village in danger, and soon it looks like the only friendly face left for little Timmy or Tabitha is to run into the woods and meet the kind grandmother that talks to them at night. A truly creepy situation. And once they're in the woods, the Anis Hag's other spell, Fog Cloud, comes into play. No one is going to be chasing after the child or tracking them very effectively through a thick cloud of fog. And before you know it, if no adventurers interfere, of course, the Anis Hag has gotten herself a meal, fresh addition to her wardrobe, and even materials for more totems. Not to mention, she gets to delight in seeing the village pull itself apart with paranoia and raw terror as more children are found to be speaking to this mysterious grandmother figure at night, hag iron totems clasped in their little hands. Worse still, once the hag has gotten comfortable and made itself a nice lair, the landscape tends to twist and warp around their fey presence. So the hilly forests or mountains that surround this now terrified and desperate village, they twist, becoming more dangerous and disorienting to navigate, helping to trap the locals and make sure that they have no choice but to sit still and suffer the hag's horrible plans for them. If that's not a good reason to call on adventurers for help, I don't know one. This seems like a good time to pause and talk about our sponsor, CMO Games. I want to thank them for sponsoring small YouTube creators and fostering the community. And you should absolutely check out their website. The reason I asked them to sponsor these videos in the first place is because they were the only store I could find that had every single mini that I needed for this video series. Their prices are good and their selection is absolutely crazy. As of recording this, they have almost 800 items just for D&D miniatures, and that's not counting their selection of Reaper minis, which is an additional 900. They also carry paints, crafting supplies, board games, games workshop lines, and collectible card games. So check out the link below and have a look. Now let's say your party manages to get through those twisted woods and make it past her loutish minions and come after the Anis Hag herself. What then? Well, dear old Granny in the woods can make up to three attacks per turn, and she has that crushing hug I already mentioned. She's more than ready for a close-up fight. But what if you want more punch, or maybe your party has dealt with a hag before and you want something different? Uh, no problem. The Anis Hag has an overwhelming attraction to objects of power, which means you have a great excuse to toss a couple of fun magical items her way as well, things she's collected over the years. You can actually tailor this a little to fit your party and your setting, and to make sure you give your players an interesting challenge that fits the group. Of course, hags can also bind together in a coven. A coven is three hags who bind themselves to one another. It grants them extra powers and extra spells. And if you've done that, or if your players are hunting down a whole coven of hags, 
I recommend trying to make it so that the Anis Hag is the one they fight last. After going up against two sly spellcasters, the last thing they'll be expecting is to have to step into the ring and go a few rounds with an elderly grandma that's secretly Mike Tyson, including the bite attacks. If you want to represent a particularly old and powerful hag, you could even add some lair actions if they're fighting her in her own domain, just to ramp it up a bit and let the players know that there's a cost for assaulting dear grandmother in her own home. When it comes to story, you have a lot of options with hags. Now to my mind, they're great for subplots or reoccurring villains. Maybe your heroes stumble upon a cursed land, where the famous family that runs the barony is cursed. They think that every firstborn child in their family line is simply fated to disappear in the night as part of a price they pay for their own greatness. A curse on their bloodline. But the PCs recognize those totems outside of town, and they realize that instead, it's actually an ancient Anis hag that has for hundreds of years taken monstrous glee in tormenting this family by stealing away their children. The fact that they think it's a curse just makes her all the happier when she sees the despair and the helplessness it inflicts. Or maybe if your adventuring party has some particularly good magic items, it's actually the hag that goes after them instead. They are drawn to items of power, after all. So word has gotten out about them, and now every hag in the land wants those items for themselves. This would be a great excuse to comb through your books, dig out every type of hag you can find, and harass your players with them all through the lower and mid-levels of the game. It's also a way to make your players stop and think about how and why they use their power. If every time they bust out a magical item where people can see it, word gets back to the hags and their search for the PCs is reignited, they might think twice about casual displays of magical prowess. Of course, if you're looking for more of a one-shot or a simple horror-themed session instead of an entire subplot, you could have the party stumble on an attack in the woods a kindly old woman is lost and being cornered by trolls. When the party heroically interposes, putting themselves between her and the monsters, they're attacked from behind by the old lady instead, the Anis Hag in disguise, and dragged into a brutal combat where they're already surrounded by powerful foes. Or maybe you could make the Hag Iron that her teeth and nails are made of into a resource. It has magical properties, of course. Maybe it can be forged into a magical weapon. Maybe one that can shapeshift into different types of melee weapon, given that the hag is magically able to reshape the iron as well. Or you could play on its message sending capabilities and make earrings and trinkets that grant the party the ability to talk to each other over long distances. As monsters, Anis Hags have a lot going for them. They're just super creepy with their totems and talking to children and wearing human leather. But they also break expectations, and that's fun. They look like kindly old women right up until they turn into a giant bruise-colored monster that can rip your arms off. But they're not just brutes, either. They're cunning and crafty, malevolent, and driven by cruelty and ego. That's a lot to work with, and I think it covers a lot of what makes them amazing monsters to put into your D&D campaign. Alright, here's our finished model. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'd like to once again thank our sponsor, CMO Games. I would massively appreciate it if you folks would hit like and subscribe, it does so much for the channel and it also lets me roll with advantage when checking for dopamine. There is, as always, more crafting, painting, and DMing content on the way. So hopefully, I'll see you on the next one.